Welcome to the Illuminating Watchers channel. If you do enjoy the video, please do consider liking and subscribing. So for today is a special paternity edition. Uh, my second daughter was born over the weekend. So keeping it a bit lighter for myself this time, but I think you'll still enjoy this one. It's sharing my collection of digital watches uh, in my state of the collection. I'll do a separate episode that covers some of my mechanical watches, but I thought some of you Casio, G-Shock, Timex, etc. geeks would enjoy this one. Before we do that, some watches out of the collection are my Everlast Boxing Watch, my King Nerd, my Neo Tokyo, this metal bezel square, this carbon core, and my full metal Tron. Goodbye to them from the collection. So this is my 70s QWO4 Casio Tron, with kind of that burgundy wine red dial. Really love this one. Uh, like the uh, condition that I got this in too. Really recommend uh, this one if you can get your hands on it. I do wear it quite frequently. Uh, second in my collection is this FS10, which is an ultra thin watch. Uh, this is, was also the Digi Paper, I believe they called it. Really played on the thinness of the module at the time. Uh, particularly enjoy this one. Um, quite a unique one that you don't see too many people wearing. Uh, this is the so-called Donny or TGW10. Uh, so-called because it was worn by Jay Gyllenhaal in the Donny Darko film. It's also known as the Trigraph because you can see there's the three graphs there along the top. Big fan of this one. Next up is the F23W. Obviously this is not the original strap here. Most of those are degraded over time. This is a, a real classic from the 80s. Uh, next up we have my depth gauge which folks that have watched my episode on uh, Casio's from the 80s will be able to see the history behind this one really fun uh, watch uh, that had their depth gauge capability able to tell how deep you were uh, when you were underwater so really fun watch next is my polygon tough uh, which was a combination of wave scepter and tough solar from the early 2000s i covered this in my recent episode on watches from casio in that particular period you don't see too many of these and the polygon shape i think is particularly attractive the dial isn't too legible you can probably see here i'm struggling to get it to catch the light but it's a really nice watch next up is one of my favorite uh, complications i've come across in a watch unfortunately not fully functioning uh, due to the fact that the network doesn't exist anymore but this is the casio viv cell also known as the white shark you can probably see on the case back there a picture of the white shark you can sometimes get these to work in terms of them vibrating when your phone rings when you turn it on uh, but that's not necessarily fully functioning in, in this particular model this is obviously the classic w59 i probably actually prefer this one over the f23w actually this was the watch i was wearing at the weekend when i had to rush to hospital uh, to get my wife uh, there to, to give birth to our second daughter so definitely not going to be able to get rid of this one now speaking of f91w uh, here is my actual one which of course is a very garish orange one i don't actually own one of the original classic black ones so probably need to change that Next in the collection is, of course, the Casio Royale. This was actually paint, hand-painted, in fact, uh, by Lucky Stripes Pinstriping. Uh, this was his Galaxy uh, colorway. Big fan of this watch, wear it all the time. Still, doubt I'll ever get rid of this one. Next is one of my favorite squares, actually from the 2000s. So this is the 5500 series, which was kind of the original Mudman. Uh, in that it has those buttons uh, that prevented some mud getting into it. It was the G-Shock 2 uh, also. I particularly like this G-Lide model that has the tide graph uh, there along the top, and this has this printed uh, strap too, really nice. This is a more recent uh, module that I got that actually has Bluetooth capability, as well as one of the funkiest straps that you're going to see. Pretty elaborate, nice gold uh, colored uh, case back too, but check out. Uh, the patterning uh, on that strap definitely for the more extravagant uh, square owner of course i have no shame so absolutely no problems with wearing this one next up we have my purple uh, g-shock square this actually has the artificial opal effect uh, there on the dial this was 
uh, from I think the, the 2010s, uh, quite a nice uh, plastic sheen uh, on the strap. Big fan of these, uh, was quite apt because I recently did a video on different dial types and Opal was one of the cool looking effects. So here's Casio's version of an Opal dial. I think it was called the Reflex uh, dial series. This is actually another a more recent uh, G-Shock Square that actually has a pretty funky kind of Velcro wraparound strap. Uh, I like the purple colouring as well. This one gets uh, a wear out uh, relatively frequently. Um, sometimes it's, it's not the best uh, material to play sport and things like that in. Uh, but a slightly different look uh, for a G-Shock Square, so it's one that I do enjoy. Next up is one of my current favourites, which is the G7800 with the dot matrix display. This one with the particularly mad looking uh, bezel, you can see the uh, impressions there on the bezel, as well as the kind of faux snake skin uh, looking ultra wide strap with ultra wide buckle. Uh, my wife hates this one, but I think that this looks absolutely amazing. Probably the coolest of all of the squares. I know that um, G-Shock Geek or Watch Geek uh, channel would agree with me on this one. He did a really helpful video that goes through the various features on this, including the 100 day stopwatch, the countdown time with multi different dimensions, and also that little LED that's below. Uh, the bezel actually lights up if you put it onto that mode. This is my 1 in 1,000th of a second chronograph uh, model, which is probably up there as being my favourite G-Shock that I own. I particularly like the kind of green buttons that you can see there on the side, as well as the asymmetric display. Uh, this was covered in my Casios of the 80s series, where I was really digging into the chronograph models when they started to introduce these. Love this model and really recommend it. The, the condition of this one was particularly good. Next up is the so-called uh, Three Eyes, or sometimes known as the Walter. Uh, this was actually uh, the more recent Holly Rood version of it that actually includes those full bars uh, along the front. Uh, big fan of this one, don't wear it that often. It's potentially a little bit big for me, but I do quite like the red uh, backlight. Uh, you can probably see on my Instagram uh, a video where I kind of showed that that's being demonstrated. This is the classic, and these are so cheap and available, you can get them from Argos. Vibe Alarm uh, G-Shock series. The particularly useful function that you can have on this one is the timer button that you can just press on the side and it immediately starts up. Whatever the timing period is that you've chosen to set up, it's kind of got these little wings uh, on the back of it as well. So a really nice watch that I think a lot of people would like. So if you're scanning Argos, this is one you can get your hands on. There's a nice version that has a green bit up top. So this one is the uh, G-Shock Kith uh, collaboration. So they do these periodically. They are always really popular. This has got some crazy packaging uh, that came with it. I really like the blue buckle as well as the kind of Kith uh, logoed strap. It does come with another strap, which is actually just uh, completely clear without the kind of Kith uh, labeling on there. And of course the rainbow bezel is an amazing effect. Uh, my daughter particularly likes this one. She always asks me, to wear the so-called rainbow watch. Next we have the most recent in my collection, which is the GBD 200, which is their kind of version of a smartwatch. This is such a fantastic display, super legible. I kind of shied away, I don't know why, from the green version, but I do particularly like this blue version. I think it's really nice. Uh, really enjoyed having this one, really good backlight on it as well. I sometimes don't quite like the kind of negative displays, but this one looks fantastic. So can definitely recommend these GBD 200s. I'm kind of using this now as my badminton watch. Next we have the Timex Pac-Man, uh, which was their T80 repackaged with the classic Indiglow and that kind of almost already glowing uh, display. I was wearing this one today. Of course, everyone's after those, you know, those new versions of the F100, where Cassie has done their own version of the Pac-Man watch, but I like this one. Even though Jody from One More Watch absolutely panned them, I think this one is super cool. Next up is a watch from my childhood, although this isn't actually the original one that I owned, I, I bought this one uh, more recently. I so wish I kept it, but the Timex Iron Man uh, Triathlon is an absolute stone cold classic, uh, loads of memories uh, behind this watch, love it, although the bloody strap keeps breaking which is really annoying me. 
I never actually owned an Atlantis 100 uh, growing up, uh, but I couldn't resist when I saw this Timex Beams collaboration where it was done in this kind of multicolored blocks. I ordered this actually over from Japan. Obviously, Beams is a retail store that exists uh, over there. I've had another, which is my Seiko Ripley, uh, which is also a Beams collaboration, which is really cool. This is uh, the Timex um, Command Urban, which is actually the video that I did, and it was a really rubbish video that seems to have the most views on my channel for some reason. It's approaching 6k views now, which is much more than I normally get, so I feel very bad uh, that that's the, the best content that I've got out there. But it's a very cool watch, cool display, shows your time zone, etc. This is a really cheap and nasty Pulsar that I got off eBay a while back, no idea why. I chose to get this one, this, the strap's all degraded and there's no keeper, but it's a very uh, fun watch to have in the collection, so why not? Finally, we have my uh, Freestyle uh, Shark, which has the uh, night vision uh, backing, cool multiple colours, very fun surf watch, I enjoyed uh, getting my hands on this one, comes out nine again, nice Velcro strap, I uh, can recommend these if you want to get your hands on them. And that's it for today's episode on my State of the Collection Digital Edition on the Illuminating Watches channel. Whilst I'm just in my paternity period, I'll likely do uh, another one of these on my Mechanical Watch Collection. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider liking and subscribing. You can follow me over on Instagram at Illuminating Watches. If you enjoyed this one, I think you'll likely enjoy my History of Casio series. So go over and click that video now. Hope you have a great rest of your day.